Ronnie, let's just come to higher education, come to upgrade, come to the education space itself. I mean, is this one of those areas which the pandemic has obviously caused devastation everywhere? But some of these areas like higher education, like education in general, maybe there has been a certain amount of rethinking. I mean, let's face it, schools and colleges have been shut for one and a half years. People are getting used to online education. People are starting to question the entire you know, route that used to be yeah. taken 12 years in school and then three years or four years of undergrad and then something else. Have those basic assumptions changed and does that make your job somewhat easier now? No, I think it makes our job a little tougher, I have to say, for three reasons. One, yes, the K-12 sector actually has seen some sense of a hockey stick because of COVID, because I think between kids physically at home and guilt complexes and four more from parents, that I think is going to plateau out as we go forward. Higher education actually has not seen that boost because while people, it is true that when you have a slowdown and when you have job insecurity, people mostly turn to saying, I need to upskill myself. But at the same time, nobody wants to make financial commitments right now. And we found two major headwinds. One is, do I want to make the financial commitment right now if I don't have a job tomorrow? And second, general sense of health and ill health in the family means, do I have 10, 15 hours additionally to give every week to make up a new cause? So we actually believe that the real turbo boost will come after COVID. The second one here is online learning is not about a Zoom or a technology in front of you and a live lecture. That's not learning. That's just content consumption. And I think what we've done at Upgrad to, to sort of personalize learning experience and give it that depth, which is equal to offline. Today, I think we have a setback because people look at this saying, ah, yes, I get what online is. Uh, I don't have to go somewhere. That's not it, because you won't learn as you go forward. So these are two things we have to actually work towards correcting. Having said that, I think we've got a decent sense of tailwind because the evangelizing for online has made universities, corporates, HR heads, faculty now accept that on, and even parents actually who are wondering, what's my son or my daughter doing from 11 p.m. to, you know, 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. in front of a laptop? All that's changing. But I think it's going to take the better part of another year for us to really see higher education and lifelong learning and working professional education go to the next level. So if I could quickly have a follow up question to that. Uh, so would this be an example? A lot of industry, a lot of sectors and a lot of people are feeling this, that short term, there are problems that the pandemic has caused. But long term, this could be an inflection point that marks the beginning of a hockey stick, the beginning of a new trend. So when you look back five years from now, this will have been seen as a major positive inflection point, although there are short term issues. Would that be a fair way of summarizing it? Yes, I think the pros do outweigh the cons. I think the headwinds are there. But by and large, what we would have been able to do over five years to evangelize that online is relevant, important and can be done. I think the pandemic has been able to do much more easier for us. Just as uh, the demonetization effort uh, sort of led to a massive boost in digital payments, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has also led to a massive boost in uh, online education. Uh, would you like to co keep uh, concentrating on the higher education piece or would you like to also look at uh, the K-12 part of it? So, sir, there are no no's in life uh, in every aspect. But all I would say is there's enough, enough to be done uh, in the entire uh, higher education space. So, I mean... I think when we look at higher education, there's the undergrad degrees, there's the test prep, entire technology enablement with colleges, then the working professionals, there's the entire segment of uh, study abroad. And actually, we are looking at an international expansion. So I think from that perspective, the segments are pretty large. The last one is, of course, B2B, because I think the more corporates adopt to online learning, the better it's mm. going to be for learners, because then they'll know that HR heads and CEOs will do that. So right now, our focus is really to stay in the higher education. There are no no's that we won't enter K-12 unless it's something very different. To me, the defining moment outside of lifelong learning is really that I think marketplaces for mentorship is going to be very, very large. I think the world is going to move towards education where one-on-one, one-on-eight -on -one, one -on in terms of consulting mentorship is going to be quite high. And that is the one new area in which we're investing in. 